Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a really interesting deck profile here. We have Ragnar Lordmon. Now this is the one back from BT3, so I do know it is a bit overdue for me to be making this particular deck profile, but you know what, it's better late than never, right? With that being said, this one is a really interesting deck given that it focuses around a level 7 and you're almost uh, in some way DNA digivolving, but not so much. It's kind of like the prototype towards DNA Digivolve. Before Bandai realized that DNA Digivolve was going to be a thing, they kind of wanted to test out different things, and I felt like Ragnar Lordmon was that uh, test that they needed to figure things out. On top of that, Ragnar Lordmon is one of the first decks out there that also focuses on utilizing two different colors in this case red and black and so this really was a pioneer of sorts this deck of many different mechanics to come later down the line so i feel like this deck definitely deserves a certain level of respect for what it actually was when it first came out it's not a perfect deck but it definitely was a deck that paved the way for a lot of new mechanics out there that we currently enjoy today such as DNA Digivolve or simply just playing multiple colors. Even then, having a special boss monster or boss Digimon that is level 7 like this uh, is also just a fantastic thing to have out there and we rarely see decks like that. Uh, special exceptions might be with uh, Examon which came out later in uh, I guess like BT 12 or 13 and uh, maybe Imperial Dramon as well but even then it was uh, quite rare to see. So without further ado let's begin. Now before I get started with this be sure to drop a like, share, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed this video it really does help out the channel but with that being said we'll start off with our Digi Eggs here. We're going to be playing four copies of Kakinmon. This is obviously our main card when attacking once per turn, as long as you have a level 7 Digimon, you get to gain one memory. I know that does take a bit of time to reach that particular point, but even so, being able to gain one memory, this is still one of the most appropriate cards for this particular deck. There might be some better options you could potentially try out, I'm pretty content with what I have. Next up, we're going to be playing our level 3s and we're starting off here with 4 copies of Ludomon. This here is our first starter card that allows you to pretty much add your Ragnar Lordmon or any of your Legend Arms cards from your deck to your hand. I should preface the fact that this deck is incredibly consistent for what it is. It just searches out things so easily and when you're maxing out 4 copies of Ludomon, you could definitely get to your goal uh, quite quickly here or at least gather up all your pieces to that so-called puzzle that is the Ragnar Lord Mon. Of course, to complement, we are also going to be playing the Zubamon as well. In total, that's eight cards you have right there that searches out pretty much your entire deck. Absolutely amazing, and both are fantastic starters for this. The other level three that I thought was appropriate for this deck, I do tend to see that this deck is a little bit more focused, leaning towards black, so I kind of built more around uh, black cards and so I'm going to be playing four copies of Argumon particularly the blocker here this is a very necessary card sometimes I will hard play this particular card here but it's an absolutely necessary card given the fact that it takes a bit of time to build up to your Ragnar Lordmon you gotta stop your opponent as early as possible and playing something so cheap like the Argumon is definitely well worth it for this deck because Argamon is only 1000 DP. It will be losing 100% of the time to any security battles or to any sort of digi battles regardless. So using Argamon to kind of act as that wall to prevent any of your opponent's high level Digimon attacks is definitely going to be a huge deal. So on to the level fours, we're going to be playing four copies here of Tia Ludomon. This card is also one of the main cards as part of the deck as well. It is a Legend Arms card, so obviously it is going to be very searchable for this deck. 
However, it's inherited effect. If it's attacking and it happens to be a level seven, you can to D Digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon. It's a huge deal. So definitely uh, worth playing four copies of it, uh, being how easily searched out it is. We're also gonna be complementing that with the Zuba Egamon, which also is um, a fantastic card with a great inherited effect as well. At level seven, you simply gain a security attack. And you definitely need that security attack because you're spending all this effort going into a level 7. You gotta have some great rewards to reap from it. So in this particular case, having these two with their inherited effects is definitely really rewarding to have when it actually gets to that point. Next up for level 5s, we're going to be playing 4 copies here of Raiji Ludomon. Obviously this is the card that follows after the Atiyah Ludomon. But uh, this one also has a great inherited effect as well. When attacking at level 7, get to de-digivolve once more one of your opponent's Digimons. So, say you digivolve this from your Ludomon, then together with this, you're de-digivolving two cards, which could really slow down your opponent. And that's definitely something you kind of need, given that your deck is always going for a level 7 anyway. So... Having this is a fantastic card, plus it's searchable anyway. We're gonna complement that again with the Duramon. Duramon is again the next follow up. And this one basically has the inherent effect of while it's a level seven, it gains another security attack. So at this point, you're piling on so many security attacks and it's just so satisfying when sometimes you're able to pull off three, four damages onto your opponents. It is absolutely fantastic. So moving on to the level sixes, which uh, funnily enough is not the end game of our deck here. We're going to be playing four copies of the Brew Lutramon. This has essentially the inherited effect of giving any of your Digimon blocker, which is absolutely fantastic because at this point, once you reach your level 7, if your opponent's trying to attack you, they pretty much stand zero chance in defeating you. You are going to be on a level 7, you are going to be Ragnar Lordmon, you are going to have such high attack. Uh, 14 if not 15 or 16k uh, DP, which is a huge deal. It defeats everything out there, it even can be stronger than Omnimon. So, with that being said, why not uh, play this with the blocker as well? And complementing that, we are going to be playing Durandamon. This one allows you to deal piercing. Absolutely powerful, this one, because you can attack any of your opponent's uh, suspended Digimon. And keep in mind, you're playing Ragnar Lordmon. You're a 14k attack. You're a potentially a 15k attack because you're most likely going to have this as your Digivolution cards. So with that being said, you're getting over pretty much any single Digimon out there in the game at this current point in time, even being able to take out Omnimon. So with that being said, dealing the piercing, dealing the security damage, and also just being able to de-digivolve your opponent's Digimon as well, I cannot emphasize how powerful that actually is. What I love about the level 6s in particular is that they can de they can digivolve over different colors. So one of the limitations with the earlier cards that we have over here is that they only digivolved from the one color. So you kind of had to pick your battles of wanting to go either the red direction or the black direction. But that being said, once you get to this point here at the level 6s, you can choose to go into your Brew Ludramon or your Durandamon which is definitely really nice here. You can see that the black is focusing more on a defensive style of play, red focuses more on this aggressive style of play, which is definitely uh, a really nice contrast, a really nice duality between the two, and it gives your deck a bit more versatility. Now, of course, I do have to preface the fact that uh, this deck here, there's an obvious weakness, and that is none of your cards actually have any effects, which is a huge deal. Aside from your level 3s, which mainly only search out your cards, the rest of your cards, your level 4s, your level 5s, they have no effects whatsoever. They only have inherited effects. So that means from level 4, 5, and 6, you unfortunately are playing with a vanilla deck. 
and you're only relying on your inherited effects to make a difference here. But with that being said, we obviously will focus on our level 7 and that's the rewarding part about this deck. So with our level 7s, you'd think we'd be playing 4. No, we just don't have the space for it. We need to uh, be able to realize that there are limitations to this deck and going into a level 7 is not so easy. So in this case, those plus additional security attacks is absolutely crucial because we're not going to be able to go into our level 7s as easily in the game. With that being said, we are playing three copies of Ragnar Lordmon. Even this is arguably a bit too much as well. Might consider dropping this down to two. But that being said, it is a fantastic card. Already has that plus one security. It's a huge deal. And when you're pairing it off with the red line, then you are essentially building up so much towards this. You have your Durumon plus one security. You have your uh, Durandamon, which uh, gives you piercing. And you also have your uh, Zuba Egamon, which is also plus security. So ultimately, you're gaining so much out of it. So that's one, two, three damage uh, onto your opponents, or rather four damage onto your opponents. Plus you have the piercing as well. So you can destroy one of their opponents' uh, Digimon and then also deal three additional damage on top of that. So you can clearly see that... Uh, by playing this particular way, you don't really need too many of the Ragnar Lord Mons because most likely you're going to be successful anyway, uh, dealing so much damage. You're at 14, like I said, you could be at 15k maybe um, with the additional cards that you might want to use to boost up this. Uh, we have some Tamers that boost up attack as well. So with that being said, this deck definitely can uh, conquer everything out there it's going to be winning a hundred percent of its security battles i'm pretty sure it's going to be winning a hundred percent of all digi battles out there and the only thing it really loses to is pretty much your opponent's uh, option cards that trigger in the security stack that being said this digimon also has reboot meaning it's not going to be unsuspend it's not going to be suspended on your opponent's turn so your opponent won't be able to attack over this particular Digimon either way. They're going to have to use or at least rely on option cards to get over this. There are some decks now that are focusing less on option cards and just focusing on just the raw strength of their Digimon, which if they uh, have nothing to get over your card, then they're pretty much uh, screwed. But with that being said, when Digivolving, you can also place one Durandamon or Brew Ludramon from your hand on top of this card's Digivolution cards to gain three memory as well. So absolutely fantastic because the Ragnar Lordmon essentially gives you potential to have both of these uh, put under it and that means you'll have both piercing and blocker as well which is uh, definitely really fantastic and of course with this particular card here I know there are later support for Ragnar Lordmon there's the starter deck and there's also another one that's far down the later the line as well but I don't play it in this deck, it clogs it up too much, and I feel like if I was to build those particular decks, you have to build separate decks for it, you cannot build them in conjunction with each other, you cannot mix up the two decks together, it just uh, makes it a lot more convoluted, and ultimately it destroys the consistency of this deck, so... For the time being, I feel like this deck only works best as is, and the only way to really upgrade this deck is by incorporating new option cards or new tamer cards that come out to supplement this particular deck. All right, so onto the tamer cards. We're gonna be playing here our Izzy, basically a memory setter, but it also allows us to gain additional memory if we happen to reveal any black cards as well. So it's a bit of a risk because it's not always going to be the case that we're getting black cards. That's why I'm only playing one but it's still a memory setter, which makes it quite the important card in this deck. The only other option card I'm playing is Tai Kamiya, but Tai is an amazing uh, tamer because this one gives all of your Digimon plus 1000 DP. It's only gonna cost you two to play this anyway, and when you have all four out on the board, that's potentially plus 4K on top of your Ragnar Lordmon, which makes it an 18K DP Digimon. That's going to be very powerful and it's going to get over everything. 
As for the option cards, we're going to be playing four copies of Pride Memory Boost. Uh, this as a essentially allows you to add any black cards with a play cost of four or less without paying its memory cost um, which is actually really powerful i mean just being able to play any of your cards right off the bat is uh, definitely a strong one obviously there's a bit of a fear that you might just reveal red cards but it's worth the risk either way it's going to be a delay effect anyway so you can uh, set yourself up for the following turn the final two cards we're playing is Flame Memory Boost, just giving another additional security attack. It just really piles on, and of course, being in Memory Boost with the delay effect, definitely well worth it. So, that pretty much wraps it up for this particular deck profile, so I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. Obviously, this deck does have a lot of weaknesses, being that most of the cards are vanillas, and so you kind of have to work your way up to 7, but it makes it all the more rewarding once you get to your Ragnar Lord Mon because most likely you could be OTKing right then and there and you really don't have to be going into Ragnar Lord Mon that often. You go into it once, deal all the damage, your opponent happens to get rid of it, just go into it maybe one more time and you're pretty much going to be securing the game. That being said, with the flaws, it can lose a bit early on in the game. That has happened several times before. But that's just one of the weaknesses with one of these decks that happened to be from the earlier sets. It was just a fun deck that I thought I would want to present to you guys. And maybe in the future I might start building other variations of this particular deck. Particularly the one from the starter deck. Or if not the later sets as well. However I hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I will see you all next time.